All right, so I'm in a bit of a strange position, one that uh, I don't mind being in. <laughs> um, I'm in the States right now, and I have to go back to where I live in Europe, and actually I cannot bring this with me. Well, I have a lot of these boxes that I was planning on bringing back, but you have to pay import tax on them uh, because it is a sealed, it's goods, right? And I bought it here. Um, that said, I don't mind actually just using the cards for my own collection, you know? Uh, I don't know if that like qualifies as a workaround, but that's, you know, I don't want, I don't need to sell them. I would love to just have them and I want to bring it back and I don't want to pay tax. And I read that, I actually spoke to the guy. He said, well, look, if it's just your own collection, uh, of cards, we probably won't flag that. Uh, I don't know. Now I regret even saying that. Maybe, now that I'm saying it online, I think I'm just going to have to pay. Uh, that said, I do need to reduce weight. So what I'm going to do is open this and I'll just take with me the good mythics and rares, etc. and leave everything else. I feel a little dumb about making that statement I made. Because <laughs> yeah, of course, I don't know why the guy was like, oh yeah, don't worry. I talked to, uh, I called the airport. Uh, to ask about their policy, and he was like, oh yeah, you know, if they're your personal cards, you know, uh, don't worry about it. But now that I think about it, that just seems a little shady, because I could sell these at a later date, right, if I brought them, so it is a good, I'm essentially importing a good, I don't know. <sighs> I'll declare them, but at the very least, let's just, first of all, it would be less value probably when we open it, right? But second of all, um, uh, what's my second of all, Coma's Faithful? Invoke the Divine, Smashing Success, and a Narfi Darfi with a Furia in the back. Of course, Furia ha was reprinted in March of the Machines. But yeah, I think I'll just have to pay tax on it regardless. Uh, but maybe I can keep some cards here and just take the ones that I really need for my deck or ones that I want to sell or something, and I'll just pay on those. Ugh, Ethereal Valkyrie to start. Skemfar Avenger. Kaya. Foil Kaya, Okay. Vega is watching. I seek his chariot. All right. Okay, Doki. Finn the Fangbearer. And finally, a Vorin Clicks. No, I'm kidding. Oh, Faceless Haven. Wow. What a start. What a start. That was a great start. Um, Faceless Haven extended foil. That's worth a bone or two. Uh, you know, obviously, the snow covered plains is a snow covered land that we will be taking with us because I can always use those. And look at this. We have exactly two perfect fits left. I, You know, I have to go to the game store. Gonna have to go to the game store. I'll take any excuse to go to the game store. Uh, that is an Isekas Chariot, beauty. And a Kaya, the inexorable, already pringled to all oblivion. Oops. Uh, but uh, pringled into oblivion? Already pringled into oblivion. Pring gold. My gosh, I can't speak today. Uh, but still good. All right, so troll and land. I'll put you over here in the corner. And faceless haven. Nah, I see this cherry goes on top. Well, the thing is, these are kind of curled. Maybe if I flip it around. That was a great first pack. Let's get more of that and a fin the fang bear. You know, that foil showcase fin was worth a buck or two until the March of the Machine came out. Or, uh, yeah, March of the Machine, the Multiverse of Legends. Oof. Finn did not stand a chance after that. Okay, I can only do one more because I don't have enough sleeves. Um, then I have to go to the local game store, so that's just the way we'll do this. Brian Barrow Intruder Masked Vandal. Nice. A foil Masked Vandal. That's got to have a little value. Ooh, and a Woodland Chasm right behind it. Sweet. Those are two great cards to pull out of that common slot. The Priest, ooh, Jaspera Sentinel. I'll separate that too, usable card. Bredegard Stronghold, wow, these are so pringled. Path to the World Tree, look at this. Look at that curve. Snow-covered forest, thankfully I have a humidor at home that I can use to uncurl. Sirtland Elementalist, that is a big uh, wet noodle. Realm Walker is not a wet noodle, really nice. Crippling Fear, I don't know. Another Finn, useful commander card. Ooh, and uh, Alrund. Not the mythic you want. Furia, Judge of Valor, and Vorin Clex. no I'm kidding. Cyclone Summoner. Well, that was a bit of a letdown compared to that first pack, but uh, Realm Walker is pretty cool. And uh, Alrund is okay. Oh, we have two sleeves left. We'll do one more. We'll do one more. Yeah, I mean, you don't want Al runs. 
when you when it comes to that mythic slot. You know, we got a Kaya and an L run so far. I think that's it, right? What was the other one? Yeah, realm walkers are rare. Ooh, village rights in foil. Well, we definitely need more sleeves now. Tormentor's helm, wither crown, dwarven reinforcements, ravenous saw it coming. Getting some serious value out of these like uncommons and commons. Rune of mortality. Snow-covered mountain. Here we go. Voren clicks. Nope, just a rare. Furia's retribution. The showdown of the scalds has a bit of value. I learned. Maskwood nexus. Really nice. Blessing of frost. Moritite of frost. A mythic. Ovar. Oh, let's go. Oh my gosh. Carter in foil. And a righteous Valkyrie in a shark. Holy bajoli! Oh my gosh, what is up with this box? Look at that. Righteous, Ovar, Maskwood. I don't even know what to, for, what to sleeve up. And we got the saw at Cummings and stuff. Wow, this has been amazing. All right, so obviously I know what to sleeve up. It's going to be Righteous and Ovar, but um, wow, unreal. What a box. Uh, I need to go buy sleeves. <laughs> And the thing I'm a little bit worried about is like the saw it coming village rights Jaspera Sentinel. Um, see how Pringle they already are? So maybe I'll try to like put them in a book or something. Oh my gosh, let's look at what we got so far from the first three packs. <laughs> Excuse me, we got ourselves an Ovar, a Righteous Valkyrie Extended Foil. Even though that's been reprinted a bunch, that's a great card. Maskwood Nexus, Alrond, Realm Walker, Isika's Chariot, Faceless Haven, and Kaya. That's what, three? That's. One, two, oh yeah, three mythics. Uh, a lot of which are very Pringle. This is crazy. This feels like Commander Legends right now. <laughs> Cards are coming out of the pack like Pringles. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll be back in a GIF. All right, I am back from my LGS. Um, we got some sleeves. So, we're covered. Well, not my LGS. While I'm here in uh, the place I'm at, outside of my normal abode, it is just an LGS down the street. Actually, a pretty cool one. Uh, if you're in the Philly area, it's called Dark Depths Games. And you would say, well, are the prices good? Yeah, you know, not amazing. However, <laughs> I haven't found a single LGS here in Philly. Oh, please don't be a feature. No. That has had, like, market competitive prices. Uh, when I was in Providence, there's a place called Untapped Games that's pretty sweet. Uh, also has, like, good prices. It's just amazing what, like, a an advantage that is because you want to support your LGS. And if your LGS is charging, you know, 260 bucks for a box of, like, a recent collector product, it's one of those tough situations where it's like, I, I want to support you, but how do I support you <laughs> without myself losing all my money? You know, that's like a $60 donation if I spend $260 for a box of uh, Brothers War Collector. Thankfully, uh, Untapped Games is not like that. You can get like Baldur's Gate for two... Well, I think Baldur's Gate collector boxes were $165. And that for me is like the sweet spot. I will gladly pay you $165 to pick it up in the store, take it home with me, um, as opposed to, uh, you know... The, what's the market rate? 150, like a $15 difference. But I'm not going to pay you 260 for something that's worth 200. It's kind of like that. That's how it goes. Now I'm missing the hits in the common and uncommon slot. Uh, that would be saw it coming and masked vandal. I put those in a book upstairs, and they are hoping to decompress a bit. These are just such curved cards. So I'll probably have to take these home with me across the pond, so to speak, uh, to put them in my dehumidifier. There we go. An alpine meadow. We got ourselves another snow duel. Excuse me. Funeral Longboat, Fall of the Imposter, and a Herald King of Skemfar. Beautiful snow-covered island. Those are just, that's the top of the line when it comes to these snow-covered lands. Despite being reprinted in Jumpstart 22, we got a rare to start off. Ruthless Winnower. I don't think that's anything. It's a commander card. Tibalt's Trickery. That's a nice little hit. Nice little get. Colvari. Not really. The Showcase Foil version has a little bit of value. Another Carter. Redain. That's kind of boring. Another, like, 80-cent card. Inga, Rune Eyes, and then Kaman Boren clicks. Come on. It's a Mythic. No, it's a rare. Toski. Yes. Wow. The hits keep rolling in. Got ourselves a Toski. 
foil showcase Toski. This is sweet because this actually showcases what Toski looks like. You know, when you look at that squirrel, you're like, oh, okay. But then when the, uh, I didn't realize until March Machine came out where they had like the invasion of, uh, you know, all those realms. Oh, was it Phyrexia? That was Phyrexia, sorry. Um, I didn't realize until then that Toski's huge. Toski is like Seraph in size or a little smaller, but he's like, if Seraph is an enlarged wolf, he is like the squirrel size equivalent of Seraph, who's also just a massive monster. And they, I think, no, they were, they were completed. They were taken over, but I'm sure they put up a fight. They were, they were, uh, they're strong, strong guys trying to protect Kaldheim from, uh, from the invaders, from Sulfin and uh, Elish Norn, Atroxa. Actually, I don't know who invaded Kaldheim specifically or how that worked. I got to follow the story more. I know the story is not what MTG is known for, but all right. So Foil Toski, that's pretty sweet. That That's kind of like if I was to, you know, look at my other uh, opening that I thought was pretty sweet, my other Kaldheim box recently, that replaces my Foil Iska's Chariot or Iseka's Chariot. All right, two more packs for this side that has been a real winner with Ovar and Toski and Isika's Chariot, Isika's Chariot. I don't I actually don't know how to pronounce that. I think in my playgroup, we just mispronounce it all the time. Alrighty, what do we got? Strategic Planning, Darth Duskwelder, uh, we got the Yeti, Valor of the Worthy, Frostbite, and Icebind Pillar, and a Fearless Liberator. Okay, okay. Oh, gosh. So we got a snow-covered island, always welcome, but I think I see another, like, ethereal armor or something, or ethereal Valkyrie behind this. King Narfi's Betrayal. Okay, but let's focus on that longboat on that island. That was pretty nice. So King Narfi's betraying us here. Mystic Reflection. Not bad. That's, uh, that's something people will want and buy. Calamity Bearer, not so much. Maya. Hey, yes! Hengigate Pathway, looking fresh. Look at that beauty. Oh, man. In the borderless, no less. Love it. Great get there. And then behind this, we have just a rare, another Calamity Bearer. I love how we get these, like, crazy doubles of things that just we don't need. Like, has anybody, if anybody ends up watching this, have any of you pulled, like, a regular uh, Voring Clicks and then a Showcase Foil version in the back? Even just like a regular Toski, a regular Chariot, and then the Showcase version in the same pack. So like they knew Calamity Bearer wasn't going to be crap, and they thought, you know what, let's give it twice. Like it's bad enough to pull that once, let's give it to them twice. Alright, so we got one more pack. Now it's a little tough opening this vis-a-vis -vis something like uh, Crimson Vow Collector or Midnight Hunt Collector, which I opened recently. Because, it, you know, you feel like you're doing great. But then you realize the cost basis is fifty dollars higher, right? I have that problem all the time with new collector boxes. Like I open new for or for actually all be one. I'm like, wow, I am crushing it. I am just getting great hit after hit after hit, and it's like, wait a second, uh, I have to make two hundred bucks or more to just break even. So, all right, King Harold's Revenge, Immerstrom Raider, Volatile Fjord, nice so land. Carter's Vicious Return, and a fin. You know what? I'll separate that. I don't know if people are still buying foil fins, but... Excuse me. All right, Snow Cover Swampy Dump into a Wolverine Riders. Okay, that's one commander card I'll take. Very nice. A in Search of Greatness. It's borderless or an extended. Maybe that's something. Just a rare. Search for Glory. Is Search for Glory something? I do I'll put it up top for now. We'll look up later. Vega... Seruf. Okay, this is kind of uh, getting to be a little bit lame. Agar. Well, no, we got the uh, Wolverine Riders. That's at least a buck or something. And just a rare. Oh, Foil Bark Channel. And a Tybalt. And a little Tybalt token. All right. I just realized, like, so much of Kaldheim double-sided cards. I mean, not the Pathways, obviously, but uh, T Valky, God of Lies. Um, and what's the other big one? Uh, the... Uh, Wow, oh, man, what's the name of the card? The Prismatic Bridge. The one where Prismatic Bridge is on the reverse side. It's all about the reverse side for both of those cards. Like, you're not playing Valky for Valky. You're trying to get, you know, you're using Tibble, and it's the same thing. You're not doing Iseka, God, whatever. You're doing um, 
you're just playing it for, I'm not speaking right now, my goodness, for the prismatic bridge. There you go. All right, so let's see how we did on this first. Eh, in search of greatness, I'll give it a sleeve. Actually, mm -hmm, I'll put it up here. I don't even know if it's worth a sleeve. All right. So uh, we did get a couple good cards here that are upstairs, right? We got Masked Vandal. I don't know why these are here. Oops. We got Masked Vandal. We got uh, Saw It Coming. We got Village Rights All in Foil. Those are pretty sweet. We also got these these cards. Let's see, which did I not sleeve? Oh, I didn't sleeve the island. All right, so this is just like a, a half, first half in review type, type section. Uh, Alpine Meadow, sure. Sorry, I've uh, got a little bit of a cold. All right. So, Snow Covered Island. Swing, bading. All right. How did, you know, should we check? Yeah, let's check. Faceless Haven. Ka oh, yeah. Um, oh, what's her name is in the back here? Maya. Kaya. So, this is crazy. This feels like a whole collector box already. So, two lands, Henga Gate. It's only two, but we got a borderless Henga Gate and a foil bark channel, so that's pretty sweet. Wolverine Riders, these are like $1 cards, but then, boom, Toski, great. That's a couple bucks. That's like 80 cents. That's probably should be over here. Okay, right, just Valkyrie Sweet, Ovar Sweet, Maskwood Nexus Sweet, All Run, eh. Realm Walker Sweet, Icicus Chariot, Faceless Haven, and Kaya. That's actually pretty nice. Like, if we do this again, I think we'll probably get close to the break even uh, level. Let's let's think about that. Uh, maybe not. Oh, maybe, maybe, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, especially because you have the lands and those uncommons too. And you know, some of those cards might be hits. Holy moly! At least I caught it. See, I'm. I'm this is not where I normally film videos. Um, this is like a really amateur, even more amateurish than my at-home setup. I've literally found a way to just put a laundry thing up against the laundry, and. Uh, you know, where you hang clothes, one of those. Let me raise it a bit, there we go. And uh, then the phone on top to peer through. All right, do we have cards in here? No. Okay, let's continue. Call the time, call the time. I'm gonna do some call the time, open names. A lot of fun to open this. I'm, I'm being so annoying right now. I don't even mean to be fearless. Pop, Skull Raid, Mammoth Growth, Shimmer Drift Veil. That is not one of the duels. Sorry. Spirit of Aldergard, and there's the Swamp. Oh no, I think this is the Ethereal Valkyrie. Ah, you never want it, ever. Raven's Warning. I'd even take the Ethereal Valkyrie over that. <laughs> Reflections of Lajara. I mean, it's a buck or two. Furia's Retribution. Agar. Wow, Blight Step, there's our third pathway, okay. A Foil Vega, that might be like 30, 40 cents. I'll put it down here. Graven Lore, eh, okay. Ooh, Tavar Kel, though. Got ourselves a little Embly Emblem. I will probably keep this to give to whoever buys my Tavar Kel. I will have it come with the uh, Emblem. I think that would be a good deal. All right, so the Jara... Are we already out of... Oh my gosh, we just ran through. Got to put more on top. Uh, Reflections of Lajara is good. Um, it's probably worth a lot more in the States than in Europe. The question for me is, like, why is it worth anything? It's in the Kaldheim bundle. Kaldheim bundles are pretty well-priced to begin with, and then they also have, like, the only dice worth anything. I take all those bundle die, put them on my store, and I've sold the Kaldheim ones for, like, five bucks. Unfortunately, they went to Australia. I didn't calculate shipping correctly, so... I ended up giving them away for free, <laughs> but they're the only ones I've been able to sell, really. And uh, so Vega, I don't know, Vega, you think Vega still has some value? Maybe I shouldn't even sleeve all these because they're gonna be safe stacked, right? Like, I just leave them because I sleeve every card, but I gotta bring all these back to Europe. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a lug. Let's just put it that way. Maybe I shouldn't do what I've been doing. I have yet to pull a Voren Clicks from a collector box. Ooh, Behold the Multiverse. All right, that might be something. Run Ashore, Shield uh, Mate, Run Amok, Mistwalker, Slumber Mod, Akai's Onslaught, into a snow-covered beautiful mountain. All right, maybe I won't start sleeving these just because they're gonna be easier to carry home with me. Pact of the Serpent, yes! That's a good commander card, nice. 
that and Wolverine Riders. Glorious Protector is also like not a terrible card, so I'll put that in the hits column. And a Righteous Valkyrie, very, very nice. Svela Ice Shaper into a eh, God favored. A Svela in foil, and that leads to the that's finally the mythic. Nope. Oh! <gasps> and a replicated ring token. So even a good token. Wow. Wow, we got the foil Henga Gate. And the Righteous, you know what? Even though it's worth it, I'm just gonna single sleeve it because I'm realizing I gotta bring all this stuff back with me and every time I double sleeve, the box gets bigger that I have to put the stuff in. Four left. So we're doing great, I feel. It feels that way. I don't know who said they got taken for a ride. I read somebody online. It's like, I always only open like 40 bucks in value when I open call time. Ooh, Weather Breeze, so nice. Uh, and for me, I just say, really? Because every collector box I've opened has been solid. I mean, then we're going to go through all the misses in a row now, and I'm going to eat those words because I just said that. Normally, when I hate on my MTG experience, that's when I get the big, the big cards. Dream Devour, yeah. Screw this game. Pyre of Heroes, not bad. I'm, I'm just getting taken for a ride. Come on, wizards. It's not working. Because they know I'm really happy with this box. Just a rare. Eh, at least it's a glorious protection. Hey! Yes! Alrighty. Nice. Coma's Coil. It's all about the tokens, guys. It's all about the tokens. Wow. That's pretty awesome. And Glorious Protector is also pretty cool. We start doing like maybe perfect fits instead of the uh, outer sleeves they probably protect a little better and pyre of heroes all right sweet three to go oops that was a mess come on one moment all right sorry about that um Oh, this is the pack. Holy moly. I guess I didn't even make it through the pack. Okay. <laughs> All right. So continuing where we left off. Grim Draugr, Story Seeker, Highland Forest. There we go. Got a little a little snow-covered duel. Rise of the Dra Rise of the Draugr, Pilfering Hawk. Rune of Sustenance actually has a bit of value. Swing, bedding. Rune of Flight, maybe a little less. Nice. We got the island. All right, Orin Clicks. You've got to be in one of these boxes. Just a rare... Cosmic Intervention. That looks really cool. Uh, all right. I don't know if it's a hit, though. Pyre of Heroes. That's okay. Battle of Frost and Fire. Got our boy Inga. Ooh, here's a Mythic. Ugh! Tavarkal. All right. Borderless Tavarkal. Not terrible. Is that a Mythic? That is a Mythic. Oh! Angel Warrior. All right. So, Burning Rune Demon. I mean, it's sweet, guys. It's sweet to get any Borderless Foil Mythic. It's just... It's a Burning Rune Demon. That's, that's the only thing. Burning Rune Demon. Only problem. All right, so the snow-covered land, I'll definitely sleeve up. Maybe even Rune of Sustenance. I mean, well, Weathered Runestone, one of the two. I'll do Weathered Runestone. All right. Let's keep this gravy train a-moving. Two packs, guys. Oh, two packs. So that was sweet. We got two mythics in one pack. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's it's not that at all. In fact, like, who am I to just get upset when I don't get a Warren clicks? I think it's to to contextualize. I've opened a lot of relative now. A lot of this. I've opened a lot of this to not. Ooh, Binding of the Old Gods. That's a sweet card. 
I guess I've opened a lot to not have a Vorin clicks. Let's put it that way. I haven't opened that much, but I should have at least one by now. And it hurts that I don't. But it is nutty that I'm like, we're getting close to break even. Maybe not on this one, but on the others without getting one. Okay, here we go, guys. But we still have time to pull a Vorin clicks. Uh, that's in the commander slot. Doesn't really count. I don't know. I'm probably not worth anything. Calamity Bear, come on. Like, that's our third Calamity... Ooh, Dark Boar Pathway. Nice. But that is our third Calamity Bear. Arnie Broken Brow. Oh, I always thought it was Bo. Harold, King of Skemfar. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm sorry. That was a weird reaction. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. I don't even know what to do. I'm sorry. Hold on. I need to uh, increase the size of this real quick. Oh my goodness. There we go. Beautiful condition, by the way. Oh my gosh, it's in perfect condition. I got so lucky. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, guys. Holy bajoli. Oh. This is so freaking awesome. Oh my goodness. All right, let me just uh, pat that down a bit. Oh my goodness. Where's the, give me the top loader. Give me a top loader. Look at this card. Look at how pristine it is. It's in better condition than like some of the other cards I got out of this box. Oh my gosh, I got so fortunate to get such a good copy, such a good condition copy, well-centered, no nicks, no cricks. Holy moly. And it's the Phyrexian text for and clicks. It's like the one you want. I can't believe we got it. I genuinely can't believe I got it. You know, I've opened eight. No, I, I don't know. A lot of collector boxes. Probably case worth. Can you imagine not getting a single Vorin clicks? Huh. And now I hit it. Now I don't have to open Caldheim collectors anymore because I got the thing I needed. It's amazing. It is amazing. There's a Dark Boar Pathway. It's also a great card. Oh my gosh, guys. All right, final pack. Well, I'll do some kind of juicy giveaway at the end of this. I'll have to think what to do. Master Scald, Bergstrider, Seize the Spoils, actually is a card people have been liking. Glacial Floodplain, all right. Colossal Plow. Great Hall of Starnheim and a Snow Covered Forest. All right, here we go. Sertland Flinger. I don't know what that is, what it does. Icebreaker Kraken. Doomscar. Not bad. This is all bonus at this point. Cole the Forge Master. Jorn, God of Winter. Narfi. And the final card of the final pack is Turgrid Foil. They even, and a shapeshifter token. They even gave us a good card to finish it off. Wow, they didn't have to do that. That was wild. That was, that was so wild. I don't even know what to say. I'm kind of speechless. Um, I'll do the summary. And I just want to say we probably got about 10 bucks in like foil commons, uncommons. I'm not even going to go through those. In fact, if people want them, we got Saw It Coming, we got like Binding the Old Gods, that's like two bucks, that's some value, that's some value, that's like two bucks, that's like a buck fifty, that's like a dollar, uh, then like I said, Masked Vandal, that's probably like two dollars in foil, uh, Saw It Coming, and some something else that was pretty good. I might do like a little giveaway for those, uh, 
if you want them, just, just say something in this video. Uh, all right. Okay. Oh my gosh. And then, as always, the bulk rares are up for grabs in every video, just so you know. We got a lot of them here. I can go through them real quick, because you can just say, hey, stop. That's what I want. You know what I mean? Uh, cosmic Intervention may not be in this column, so I still have to go through it. So in Search of Greatness probably isn't either, but I don't know. Search for Glory, I'll have to check. If you want a Bordeaux Foil Calamity Bear, this is where you'll get it. Just say something. Cyclone Summoner and Foil, Crippling Fear, Skimfar Avenger. <sighs> I think Search for Glory is kind of okay, so just to protect the foiling. All right, let's go through how this pack went. Obviously, a lot of snow-covered duels. Um, I always say it, one of the hidden benefits of opening these boxes is that you actually have, like, valuable tokens in here. And I don't know if the Shapeshifter foil's worth anything. Demon Berserker might be, Angel Warrior, but Coma's Coil, certainly. Replicated Ring, certainly. Um, you know, Coma's Coil, then we got a Tavar Cal and a Tybalt token. Uh, oops, that doesn't belong there. Oops, none of this belongs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I made some mistakes there, I guess. Um... Oops. So, tokens have some value, and uh, obviously snow, some no lands, right? So, snow lands and duels, and then if you're in the states, the foil commons and uncommons, that's, you know, already a little bit of value for you. Good amount of value for you. Um, all right, but let's go into the non Vorin click stuff, okay? Because <laughs> foreign clicks is obviously amazing. So tokens, maybe another five to ten dollars. It's so variable. I don't know. Uh, Snowlands, you know, especially how many islands did we get? We got um, Vega. Oops. Oh, I gotta check Vega. Oh, we got more than the last box. We got three islands. So this is probably another like. Uh, let's see how many we got total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. That's probably another like eight bucks, right? not bad and then of course like i said this is probably 10 bucks plus depends where you are europe or the u.s so that's almost like you know let's say 20 dollars and just tokens and commons and uncommons not bad and lands not bad you know maybe that's a little standard actually now that i think about it uh but it's better than uh i don't know it's something it, it, regardless of the box you're opening it's about as good as i would say like brothers war it might even be better than some of the new collector boxes actually i would say better for sure that's something the old collector boxes have on the new all right, so what did we get that wasn't uh, a Vorn Clicks? Well, let me go through this real quick. Sorry, maybe I shouldn't do this like this. <laughs> um, I am just separating like hit rares, like big rares rather, from lands, from other things, from mythics, certainly. Oh my gosh, what a crazy box. Okay. So I'm going to go through the like $2 and up pile, okay? And the the lands, actually Doomscar might be in there too. Okay, so first we'll go through some of like the borderline rares, then we'll go through the big rares, and then we'll go through the mythics. This is crazy. I'll do the math in my head as I go based on my best memory of everything. Actually, maybe I'll do the, I'll, you know what? You know what? Yeah, I made you watch this. Let's go through it. Pyre of Heroes, Glorious Protector, Showcase Foil, Pyre of Heroes again, Glorious Protector Regular, Lajara, Redain. Okay, so this is like the in-between rares. That's like 80 cents. That's like $1.50. Let's say all together it's like $5 here. Okay. That's about 5 bucks. That gets us to about 25 in value. 25 euros, rather. Then in terms of big rares, we got Doomscar, Turgrid, Mystic Reflection, Faceless Haven. So this is probably three, two, five. 10, 12, uh, 22, 26, um, for me, this is actually 36, 38, 42, 44, uh, 58, 60, and 66. That's 66. Um, and then we got Bark Channel. Uh, well, look at how many lands we got. Holy crap, this is more, last time we got three. So, this is kind of tough to calculate because in Europe it's worth so much more. Probably 7, um, 12, uh, 18, 27, uh, 37 in lands. <gasps> That's kind of nuts. So that gets us to, uh, let's say, 100. Okay, we'll just, just rounding down. 
And then here we go to Varkel. This is worth a lot more in Europe, but that's probably um, 104, 108. This is only worth like a buck or two. Uh, 104, 108, 109. Uh, 114, 134, 138, something like that, right? Maybe even more. And uh, yeah, so I, honestly, I'd be okay saying 140. That is some crazy value. That's 140 at least. Uh, could be lowballing on card market though. Then you got the bulk rares that have some value, but then we got this guy right here. So, and I gave you like resale value. Is it off center? No, it's actually pretty decent. Holy crap. So this used to be over 100. Now it's probably like 80, but that puts us well over 220 for this box. Um, if any amendments are necessary, I will add those in, uh, but that's the total value we just pulled from this box. It may even be bigger. I would say that's a relatively fair assessment that I gave it. Uh, now, when I start pricing everything and I'm wrong, I'll come back, you'll see a little redaction at the end, but oh, I can't believe I pulled the boring clicks, guys. I'm sorry this was such a long video and I talk so much and I go through everything so slowly, but uh, I love opening boxes and I am complete. I've hit the Voren clicks. Don't do as I do, do as I say, which is buy singles. Uh, you don't even have to do it for me, but if you're gonna open product, there are some things that are better than others. And despite what people say, I still think call time's great, especially if you're in Europe, but then again, we pay more for our boxes. Um, but even in the States, OVAR, Voren clicks, that's more than half the box. Pro oh, goodness, you can get it for 150 bucks in the States. We basically broke even from the Voren clicks and OVAR, not quite, but. Oh my gosh. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a good one.